In order for us to examine Kepler's laws from the framework of Newton's laws, we're going to need to work in polar coordinates. <clears throat> well, we don't need to, but it's certainly the most convenient uh, coordinate system to work in. So azimuthal angle phi, <coughs> distance r, and we're going to be considering, I mean the reason for doing this is that we're interested in the kinetic energy of a mass m at a distance r and angle phi. And uh, certainly by just straightforward trigonometry, this side of the triangle is r cosine phi because that side is r, the hypotenuse is r. And this vertical side of the triangle gives us y. And now we're interested in finding the kinetic energy in polar coordinates. So the reason polar coordinates is, is useful is that if this, if the mass, if the Earth is mass m and the Sun is at the origin, then the Earth is going to be moving in a plane. Uh, so the plane of motion of the Earth includes the Sun, and for one of your one of the exercises, you'll actually show that that it will stay in a plane. But we're interested in the kinetic energy, and the subtlety here is that. R is not necessarily a constant. It would be for uniform circular motion, but Kepler's um, first law says that planets move in ellipses around the sun. So R is changing as well as phi. So we have to think about both R and phi changing with time as a planet is orbiting around the sun. And we want to try and figure out what the kinetic energy is. Well, as we talked about in, um, in an example in Chapter 7 of the simple pendulum, the best place to start and the surest way to get the right answer is to start with the kinetic energy in Cartesian coordinates. So see the example for the simple pen pendulum. For a derivation of that, but it's, this is just v squared. Uh, the hypotenuse squared is this. The speed squared. Another actually easy way to see this is that this is just a, a vector. Um, if you have a speed v like this, and it has components in the x and the y directions, then by the Pythagorean theorem, v squared is vx squared plus vy squared. And we need v squared in here for the kinetic energy, and this is in fact vx squared plus vy squared. That's a simpler way to see why that's the right starting point. Okay. So now we have x and y, but we want x dot and y dot. Let's figure out what they are. x dot is going to be the derivative of r cosine phi with respect to time. Well, what's that? R depends on time. Phi depends on time. So I'm going to have to use the product rule. So I'll get a d by dt of R. That's just R dot. Multiply by cosine phi. Plus R times the derivative of cosine phi with respect to time. Derivative of the cosine is minus the sine. It's not 
that term that's negative, minus r. So now we're taking this r times the derivative of that. Derivative of cosine is minus the sine times the derivative of the inside. Since we're taking the derivative of, uh, of this with respect to time, I need the derivative of phi with respect to time. It's just phi dot. That's x dot using implicit differentiation. y dot is d by d t of r sine phi. Derivative of the first times the second will be r dot sine phi. Then the first times the derivative of the second will give me an r. As the derivative of the sine is the cosine, times the derivative of the inside is phi dot. There's x dot and y dot. Now all we have to do is substitute this and this into this. And we're done. This is where the fun begins. <laughs> So I have to substitute this mess into here. I've got to square it. So just Merry Christmas, we have to have at it. Um, to square this quantity, I'm going to have to have this times itself. Um, let me see how I want to write this. Yeah, let me write it out. r dot cosine phi minus r phi dot sine phi times that thing itself again. That gives me x dot squared. Now I need to have y dot squared. Still inside these square parentheses. y dot would be r dot sine phi plus r phi dot cosine phi. By the time you get done with this section, you're going to be really good at doing um, trig, an algebra involving trigonometric functions. Times this thing again. All right. Well, that looks like a mess. Um, let's look at some particular terms. This term times that term. I'm going to actually make myself a little more space. That term times that term. R dot squared times cosine squared phi. times cosine squared phi. <clears throat> Let me now consider that term times that term. That'll give me r dot squared sine squared phi. You're starting to see a pattern here, I'm sure. Some simplifications. Now let's look at that term times that term. I got a minus times a minus is a plus. <clears throat> I've got an r squared 
that's the, these two R's, phi dot squared times sine squared of phi. And now let me look at these two terms. There's a method to my madness here. R squared phi dot squared cosine squared phi. It takes care of those. Now let's look at the cross terms. This one gives me r dot r phi dot cosine phi sine phi with a minus sign. This one gives me r dot r phi sine phi cosine phi also with a minus sign. So those cross terms from this first term here give me two identical terms, both negative. Minus two r r dot cosine phi sine phi. That takes care of the cross terms for this. This times this plus this times this. Two identical terms that add up to this. Now let's get the cross terms for this guy. r dot sine phi times r phi dot cosine phi. That would be r, r dot, phi dot, sine phi, cosine phi. And then this cross term will give me an r, r dot, phi dot, cosine phi, sine phi. So we end up with two identical terms. And now the miracles just, miracles just start happening at this point. Because you say, well, hey, Dr. Edwards, those two terms cancel. And you would say correctly. And then these other terms end up looking pretty darn simple. If you factor out an r dot squared from these two terms, you end up with cosine squared phi plus sine squared phi, which is our old friend, 1. So just get r dot squared times 1. Same thing here. If you factor out the r squared phi dot squared from both terms, you end up with sine squared phi plus cosine squared, which is 1. And that, with a little luck, is what we were hoping to show. 1 half m r dot squared plus r squared phi dot squared.